Howdy fixers, here's how to replace your head gasket. And if you haven't subscribed, give me a subscribe and give me a like. Now, we got our head, or not our head, or block, and it's still got gasket material on it and stuff like that. So we're gonna go ahead and do some scraping, and I'll show you what to do. So, you wanna take a razor blade and just kinda, just kinda work on getting all this gasket material off. You want to make sure you don't like get any stuck down here where your lifters are because you can gum up on the lifters and you know plug past oil passageways and all that good stuff. You just you don't want to do that. Um, so you just want to get in there and get this clean. I'll even go over with this with some like scotch bright and just you get some scotch bright and start buffing on it and you want to get it pretty shiny. Um, because you don't want anything to be sticking up or anything like that. Once you feel like you've gotten it, and you go ahead and take some carb spray and you spray it, and then you can see if there's any gasket material left, it'll, it'll come up and it'll look black, just because it's, the gasket material is getting wet, so then, it, you know, that's more gasket material you can take off. So that's kind of one of the tricks I've learned, um, but I'll show you. All right, so you can see it's super cleanish. So you got like this black spot, you see that there, where my finger is? I sprayed this with carb spray and that I wasn't visible until I sprayed carb spray on it. So you can take a razor blade and can actually start working that stuff off. And it's very minimal. See, so I'm just getting a little bit there. But you just keep at it and you get all these black spots off because even the little bit of abrasion or something that sticks up a little bit can cause your head gasket to fail and after doing this big job you usually you don't want that to happen so just take the steps now and precautions to make sure you never have to do this again okay so now we got back on here we're gonna go ahead and we put sealant we put just like some uh, thread sealant on our bolts and I got them snug right now and so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna torque it out well, we're going to start the first time, we're going to do 22, then 45, then 110, and this bolt in the front here is 100 foot-pounds by itself in the last torque. So we're going to start in the middle, and it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and it just extends out until you get the whole thing. So this is going to be the first pass, there's 22, 22, 22 foot-pounds. 22 foot pounds, and then we're gonna go jump over here. 22 foot pounds. 22 foot pounds. And I usually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a paint marker and I'll mark each one that I just did so I know. So that's the first step. I'm gonna show you the next. Alright, guys, so once you get your uh, head torqued, like I told you to, um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our push rods in, and we're gonna put them in each spot. We're gonna put one in each hole. And we're going to put them in the way we marked them. And then we're going to put our rocker arms, or rockers, back in. And we torque those down to 21 foot-pounds. You just want to make sure that everything is lined up correctly. Because you can bend a push rod if you're not doing it right. Okay, dope. So I went ahead and I put all my rockers back in. They're all finger tight now, or tightish. Um, so we're going to... I dumped some oil here so we're not going to be dry when they start up and then we're going to go ahead and start torquing and these are all just torqued down to 21 foot pounds because they're not adjustable so they're just a solid thing so that's all we do so i'll go ahead and torque the rest and show you else all right so you want to take your valve cover bolt and it's actually going to lay down on top of the studs that we put in because you want to make sure you put these head bolt studs in the correct place and this one's just the second one back and vice versa on the back there so I'm going to show you what you need to do to your valve cover. So on your valve cover, you need to clean this off. I need to do a little bit more cleaning, but you're going to pop your old ones out. you got these metal sleeves here. They come out, and then your new head gasket set comes with these new rubber seals. And you put those in, and the metal goes on top and squishes it down on top of the valve cover. All right, so this is, I got it all cleaned off now. I used some Johnson carb cleaner and cleaned it off. It looks a lot better. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one of your black here. You're going to stick it in the hole. Make sure all three tanks come out, and then you're going to shove your metal through. And that is how it's supposed to look. Alright, so what I've done is I've made sure my gasket lined up the right way, and you have the curved end, like this. And that's the way you should have it in there. On both ends, your curve should be pointing down. Um, so I went ahead and I got my exhaust on, and everything's going to be kind of loose. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to 
start my bolts for my power stream pump to kind of keep this intake in place. And then I'm gonna be able to put my hardware back in, I can get my exhaust and my intake torqued at the same time. So let's see what I can do. So I got this on here now and it's not tight, it's kind of loose, but and I put one bolt here in the back, just kind of keep everything together. And then you can go ahead and take your hardware, put that in place, because you have these big washers with your bolt, and they just they kind of go in between your intake and your exhaust manifold, and they act as dual purposes for your intake and exhaust bolts. So this is the intake and exhaust, and you want to make sure that the intake and exhaust are evenly spaced when you tighten down your bolts. And we got new hardware from the dealership, and you just want to make sure that it lines up correctly and they don't have any spaces or anything. If you have spaces, it's going to leak, and you're going to have intake leak and exhaust leak, and you just don't want that. Alright guys, so I'm here at the bottom, and I'm going to put my bolts in for my intake and my exhaust. See that one there? Afterwards, then we're going to go ahead and put our bolts in for our exhaust, and tighten those up. So as you can see, I got my thermostat on, we got our belt kind of looped in there. Everything, we got a fuel rail, all that stuff, the connectors put on your intake. Um, once you get to this part, it's pretty easy going back the other way. Just want to make sure that you get your coil on. And then you got this ground strap here for this. It's an interference thing for your coil. So I kind of just fast forward a little bit, got some stuff back together, got all this stuff together. Um, got my fan back on, you'll make sure that's tight. And you just do it the same way you took it off. If you haven't seen my first video, check it out. And then you'll be able to tell what needs to be done. So I got everything in there. I put some coolant in This just takes regular uh, green coolant. Um, and I got the battery hooked up, so we're going to see how she runs. So, first initial startup is you want to just crank it a little bit, let the oil circulate through there, so you don't hurt anything that's dry. So, I'm going to do that right here. just like that she runs and uh so but look for leaks make sure there's no leaks no oil leaks no coolant leaks or anything like that let's see what happens so just like that fixers everything's running like it should be now so i checked fluids fluids look great oil looks great so it's just we got her done and she sounds sweet howdy fixers so that's how you do it. Um, appreciate you guys following along on the two-part journey and uh, just so I can show you how to do your own mechanic and get your 4.0 done on your Jeep Wrangler or your Jeep Trend Cherokee. They use the same engine for many years. Um, so thanks for watching. If when you start it up and you got some smoke, I didn't show you the smoke and stuff like that. It's pretty common to have some smoke burn off, just stuff burning off from using the penetrating oil on your exhaust or just your handprints to have oil in it can touch the head and stuff like that and it impregnates like the oil and it burns off it is nothing to worry about if you continue to smoke for hours then you got another issue oil leak or something like that but hope you like my video hope this helped you be your own mechanic and as always you know it helped you save a couple bucks um if you like what i'm doing for you first time watching give me a like give me a subscribe uh tell a friend about it and uh, i always got more stuff coming out every day not every day, but at least one video a week or so. But I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I got like 250 subscribers now, and I just, I really appreciate it. So you guys have a good one.